On September 21, 1976, agents of Chilean General Augusto Pinochet detonated a car bomb in Washington, D.C. Victims Chilean resistance leader Orlando Letelier and American Ronnie Carpen Moffitt were on their way to work at the Institute for Policy Studies. Ronnie's husband Michael survived the attack. For 30 years, their families have fought for justice. We were, when, when you're Jewish, you sit shiver. You sit for certain days to mourn someone who dies. I had a rabbi come in, who's a friend of, was a friend of mine, and he said, you have to understand, it's no, it, this will be no consolation, but nothing worse can ever happen to you in your life. But let me say something about the Carpens. They were members of a community in which people came to them for advice, for free food, uh, they ran a delicatessen there, and on top of that, they were political activists. Murray was very interested in schools, and as I recall, served on the school board. This is something, of course, that Ronnie later on picked up as well as a teacher. Uh, they were always ready to participate in what was necessary to do to bring about justice. And they came to demonstrations and press conferences. They even went so far as to write op-eds and see members of the Senate to help in the case. There's one important moment in which Murray came down in 1998 after Pinochet had been arrested. And we went to the British embassy to urge them not to send him home. The British bureaucrat was very prissy. But Murray broke through. He asked, if this were Adolf Hitler, would you be letting him go on humanitarian grounds? And there was no answer. Orlando Letelier left behind a wife and four teenage sons. After the assassination, two of them, Jose and Francisco, formed the Orlando Letelier Brigade, traveling around the United States painting murals in the Chilean style. Francisco continues to use art to advocate for human rights around the world. Christian, an actor, has been an articulate supporter of the Letelier Moffat Human Rights Awards, which have recognized heroes in the U.S. and Latin America for 30 years. Juan Pablo is a senator in Chile and has used the political system to help the families of other victims. I know where my father is. I know where he's buried. I can take a flower to his tomb. But there are many people, thousands of people, dozens of thousands of people who don't know where their son is, where their father is, where their mother is. They don't have the right to leave a flower on their gravestone. They don't know what happened. Now that's a tragic benefit I have, but I feel very guilty and I feel very committed to not stop doing what we have to do so that everyone has that right. Isabel Letelier worked at the Institute for Policy Studies for 14 years after her husband's murder, running a third world women's project and becoming a worldwide advocate for human rights. Fabiola Letelier had already begun to work against Pinochet's barbaric practices before he ordered her brother killed. Today, as one of Chile's leading human rights attorneys, she continues to press for full accountability. Over these three decades, the families have achieved measures of justice. 
First, the FBI arrested the assassins, one U.S. citizen employed by Pinochet and a gang of anti-Castro Cubans he recruited. Then, Chilean courts convicted two generals who had organized the Letelier assassination. But the families refused to give up until the man ultimately responsible faced trial. On October 16, 1998, the unimaginable happened. British police arrested Pinochet. A Spanish judge charged him with crimes against humanity and requested his extradition. Public pressure moved the Clinton administration to declassify documents on Chile and sent FBI agents to collect additional evidence that Pinochet had ordered the Letelier assassination. The Bush administration has yet to indict him. Although allowed to return home, Pinochet faces charges in his own country. In 2004, new revelations showed he was not only a mass murderer, but also a thief. This year, Letelier family members supported the election of a former Pinochet victim as president of Chile. In July, President Michelle Bachelet paid tribute to Letelier and Moffat at the memorial in Washington, D.C. In their pursuit of justice, the families of Orlando and Ronnie used whatever means they could. They used art, they used politics, they used the media, and of course they used the courts. And after 30 years, their efforts shine as a stunning example of what people can do for the rest of the world. Pero aquí te conocí, pero aquí te conocí, si en Málaga tú naciste.